that H. If you were given delta H, you give it delta S, you know the temperature, so you can directly get delta G. What if you don't know the temperature? There is another way to do that. If all the reactions occur at a standard state, on the standard state, all right? So you have to know what is standard state. In chapter 6, you learned that. I ask you to go back and review chapter 6. So what is the standard state? For different state, for different, for the substance under different states, we have different definitions. If you have gas, if you have gas, you must be pure gas and then at pressure one <coughs> atmosphere. So that state we call it a standard state. Which means okay, if I say the gas is under standard state, you immediately know the pressure. Right? The pressure is a hidden information given. Pressure is one atmosphere. So for the solid and the liquid, here we mean pure solid and a pure liquid. The standard states also require one atmosphere pressure and also it's a temperature of interest. In most cases, we have 25 degrees as an interesting temperature, okay? room temperature, we call it room temperature, 2982. 2980 Kelvin or 25 degrees Celsius. And for the solution, this definition for the standard for solution, it will be important for chapter 19. So keep in mind. So the solution we define with the concentration of one molarity. Oh, so you are actually, if I tell you the solution is at standard state, you are given the concentration. So one molarity, okay? So that is for solution. So the how to define the standard state is very important because there are a lot of hidden information here, right? And usually we use a symbol, the superscript zero, to represent a standard state. If you say this super zero here, that means standard. If you see the delta S, with the superhero zero, that means it's a standard state. Oh, if it's pressure, I know it's one atmosphere. If it's solution, I know it's one molarity. Right? So that is the symbol. Okay? That is the standard state. Okay? So just review a little bit. So now we have absolute entropy. We define the absolute entropy. Basically, it's defined the amount of energy it has due to the dispersion of energy through its particles. So it looks like, ah, uh, what's that? So, but if you look at the further definition, it's much, it will be easier to understand. So we define if the substance got a perfect crystal, perfect crystal, which means very organized, no randomness at all. Right? If I, I say, okay, I'm going to assign a number for each of you in the ACS exam. You must sit based on that number. So you have no randomness at all. You cannot say, okay, can I sit there? Can I sit back? Can I sit in front? No, you have to find your number, sit there. So no randomness at all, right? So that is a perfect crystal. Very organized, no randomness, so no entropy. So if we define that, the absolute entropy is zero. But of course, that is a ideal situation, so it won't exist. So all the absolute entropy for the substances should be positive. Everything should have some randomness. Okay, there's no perfect. Thing. So all the absolute Entropy for the substances is positive. That's why the entropy is positive. That doesn't mean the dark entropy. Okay? So that is for absolute entropy. So how to define how to compare the standard entropy? Or you can compare the absolute entropy. 
So the gas always has larger entropy than liquid. That we already know. So gas has larger entropy than liquid. Liquid has larger entropy than solid. So that we already know. Here, just show you some data. But if so you don't have to write if you don't want to, right? So everything is in the PowerPoint. So here, right? So we already know it's always positive. That is always positive. So for the entropy, gas has larger than liquid, larger than solid. That's in the beginning of this chapter you already know. So now, if two substances have the same state, or they are both gas, if they are both liquid, or they are both solid, they are the same state, then you can pair their molar mass. Okay? So the one with larger, larger molar mass gives you larger entropy. Okay. So larger molar mass, larger entropy. So now. Standard state, you already know. I'm repeat the picture. So now we can calculate the standard energy change based on the energy of formation. So we already learned that in chapter six for delta H, right? Delta H. Let's start with the, from the one you're familiar with, Delta H. And now today we're going to learn Delta S. It must be standard. It is equal to zero. It is standard. Okay? Standard. So anyone still remember the equation for delta H reaction if you have formation? Something sigma, right? Always use your product minus your reactants. Subtract your reactants from your product, okay? So your reactant, or your product. And uh, in most cases, you have to consider strong atomic coefficient number. The coefficient number should be considered product. And because you may not have one product, you may got two or three or multiple, so you put a sigma. Means you have to add all the energy change for your product. Then you subtract this one. You add it. That is in chapter six. Okay, if you haven't reviewed, please go back and review because exactly the same thing for delta S and delta G. Exactly the same. Okay? The only change is your symbol. Here becomes delta S uh, product. Forget I mean standard. Okay. So here also the same thing. Product. Delta G product. And here should be delta product F. 
right? Means formation. Hmm? Means formation. So this can be found in the table. So it's already been found out, been measured. Formation, huh? formation. To acid. E to acid. To F. So means means for F means formation. So these equations are exactly the same. If you know one of them, you know all of them. Right? And if in the question you're given delta H and delta S formation, not delta G, so of course you always have delta H minus P delta S. <coughs> this still works. Let's see a problem. So the problem related with this is very straightforward. Very straightforward. The only thing you need to do is how to know this equation. For example, I get an equation uh, problem from the For example, here, I'm going to repeat these equations, so no worry. Calculate uh, here said that D should be delta, okay? Delta S for the reaction. And you're given a table with all the S. So what do you need to do? Very straightforward. So delta S, reaction, there should be reaction. Equal to your sigma and product. I just use P represent for product. Delta S. Yeah, Product, sigma, and reaction. That has um, here I have to use S. I have to use that S. So you use S is fine. If you're given S, you use S. But because you define the absolute S as zero, so it's S. Reaction. Okay? So now, Just plug in the numbers. Start with your product. I have two products, right? So nitrogen monoxide gas, okay? Find where is my here. Nitrogen monoxide gas is 220.8. Don't forget your N. N is your coefficient number. What is the coefficient number for nitrogen monoxide? Four. Right, so four here, don't forget that. Many people may make mistakes when do that. And you have one more product, so you have the class. The sigma is added together. So plus you have six water, six. And the water is here, 988. If you want to put a unit, it's okay. They all have the same unit, so it's one. Right? So ignore the unit. So that's it, you have two products. How many reactants you got? Also two. So let's say ammonia first. Ammonia, I got 192.8, and then I put a paracetamol, so I can just add. Huh? Oxygen, I have five oxygen, 205.2. That's it, you just use your calculator, solve it. So my third as reaction, equal to, so I just ignore all the steps. I'm going to find the answer one step. You're okay. Very straightforward. Just plug in all the numbers. So you must be careful for the position number. And always use product first and then reaction. Okay? Any question here? Or any information now? So, very similar for delta G. So you're given the equation, reaction equation, and then you're given all the delta G formation. So you are asked to calculate delta G 
actually by degree. And in that case, you don't need the temperature. The temperature just tells you it's a standard state, right? So now you calculate delta G reaction standard state because you have a zero here. So you can do sigma n product delta G F product. product. And then reactant, delta G reactant. So now just plug in the numbers. Okay, product, I have three products, right? So let's start from carbon dioxide here. Be careful, if you're given a negative number, you should copy that, still a negative number, okay? It's, uh, I have to use bracket. So I only have one, one multiply negative three minus four point six. Okay, if it's negative, you copy the other negative. So now I have another one, water. I got two water. Water is also negative. And then I have oxygen. Oh, not oxygen, ozone. So it's O3. Oh, so it's four. So it's four. Positive, right? Positive. So that's all my product. Then you're going to minus your reactants, right? You're going to minus your reactants. So what are you going to do? Just uh, continue minus your reactants. I still need to do negative. Methane, stage four, negative. But you only have one, right? One minus one, negative, stage two. And then sigma is plus. Oxygen, you got eight. So it's zero. So everything's given. So just use your calculator, calculate. What I got? Negative one forty eight point three kilojoules. So it's spontaneous or not spontaneous? Delta G negative. Spontaneous. Yeah, the question can be changed. Not ask me delta G, but ask you if this reaction with this information is spontaneous or not spontaneous. So you still need to calculate delta G, right? So it's a spontaneous process. So again, the question related with this type, this equation will be very straightforward. But there are a couple of things you need to be careful. For example, here, you have to remember for all three elements, the delta G formation is always zero. Three elements means like oxygen, O2, or chlorine gas, Cl2, hydrogen gas, they are all zero, okay? For all this, the delta GF will be zero. I tell you that is because sometimes in the question, this information is not given. You may think, okay, I need the delta G formation for oxygen. No, it's importantly, think you should know it's zero. Okay, if you think you missed it, it should be zero. Right? So, just careful for that. So, before that, you guys go, next class, we're going to do this. We're going to do another way to calculate delta G, but it's also exactly the same as you did for your chapter six, the Hess law. Here, please go back and review this Hess law. If you know, if you remind, if you remember that, it will be much easier to do delta G. Exactly the same method. 